Okay, our beloveds, this morning our another's wondering how any of this is sustainable, how we can continue to offer you messages pretty much every day that will help you on your particular journey. Part of the information that we share is just basic universal law, <clears throat> which held true a hundred years ago, a thousand years ago, and will hold true a hundred years from now and a thousand years from now. But then there are other aspects of this particular journey upon which you find yourself, which are uniquely unique today, meaning that the energies within which you find yourself today as well as the coming days and maybe weeks, which are unique stressors or unique opportunities to grow into the best version of you. And while many of you are still not really resonating with these types of messages, and that is completely okay, Many more of you are seeking outside of yourselves. And even though, believe it or not, if you do not hear this particular message with your own ears, by us sharing it and putting it out into the ether, the vibration of this message is being reinforced. So in theory, even if zero of you ever heard this, it would be out there. Now, this does beg the question with the double slit experiment. Does a tree make a sound when it falls in the forest if there is nobody to hear it? And the answer, of course, is no, because the sound is objective yet subjective, right? If there was no one to hear it, then it does not exist. So now going back to our messages, which we share with you, with great frequency and great relevancy to where you find yourselves. Our purpose is more than anything else to teach our another to stand up for what she believes in, which is truth, which is universal truth, and to share this knowledge because it fulfills her life's purpose. It answers many of her own internal questions on how all of this comes together. It reinforces much of what we have taught her before. It keeps her occupied during the day. It helps her to build a greater ability for channeling our message. It is preparing her for the next steps that we have set forth in her future. And for those of you who choose to listen, it gives you some insights as well. But we wish to point out, just as in our message yesterday, go within and heal yourselves and do not desire to heal anyone else. Because within you healing yourself is the solution, is the answer to where you collectively find yourselves. And so we wanted to point out to you all that that is exactly what our another is doing by sharing these messages. Well, she does do it for you all in hopes that one or more of you will be positively impacted by these messages or lessons. The main reason why she does it is because it makes her heart sing. If she never generates a dollar off of this, but learns who she is, learns how to better channel, how to uh, dig more deeply into the esoteric nature of what it is that we have to offer, to create a greater depth and resonance with the uh, future implications of what it is that we are sharing. If she can just tune into herself and her own inner connection and be willing to share it just because she's willing to share it, but she does it solely for herself, therein is the gift to humanity because she is healing herself. She is putting herself first and doing what makes her happy, what makes her heart sing, without a need for any positive feedback from people, without any financial reward, without any evidence that it's changing anybody else out there, because it is changing her. It is changing her life. 
is, is it is changing her own inner compass. It is creating a greater resiliency because within this process, she is truly finding herself and her ability to stand up for herself in those areas where she desires to grow. It is helping her to find a voice that she didn't have before, which she is greatly enjoying. It is helping her to connect to the springboard uh, breadcrumbs that we have, which looks more like a frog that is bouncing from rock to rock. There is movement in it, is what we're trying to say. She is finding great joy in where she finds herself right now. And if she did this, for the rest of her life, she would be content, believe it or not. And therein is the lesson for humanity. If you could find something that you could do laying in bed every day, where all you do is go within and learn about yourselves and why you tick and how you tick and what makes you happy and content and you don't worry about the impact that you have on others. You don't worry about having lunch meetings or outings with friends. You literally spend the bulk of your time in your bed doing your inner work and you find great joy and contentment with such limited activities because your physical body has betrayed you in some ways, but you are okay with that and you are settling in with that most of the time. She has her moments too. It is a gift because you begin to realize how important your inner world really is and how creative and imaginative your, and this is going to be difficult, your complex We don't want to use inner world. Again, your complex inner sanctum is. You begin to realize that you have been so busy doing, 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 running around and doing things like a chicken with his head cut off. And you were not permitted to slow down by this societal construct because you were told that you were lazy or you were not doing your part. And everyone has such a need to help and heal others in some sense, that you completely overlook the desire and the need to help and heal yourself first. And when you go back to this place of surrender, you will find that you need to work on yourself from within first. And when all of that has been resolved, your outer world will begin to shift and open doors for you to go through to create a new outer expression of your life. But when you are forced to sit in bed for days, you have no choice other than to do your inner work because there's not much else you can do at some point. Now, many of you, believe it or not, do figure out a way to fill every minute of your day without actually doing any inner work because you create a busyness in watching TV shows or communicating with people or doing things which are again a doing versus a being source of regeneration. And you will continue to be in that bed space until you figure out what your inner world can look like. So look at these opportunities that you have been given to grow and how they present themselves and simply do it. Find what makes you happy. Your journey is not our another's, and our another's is not yours. But figure out what makes you happy, truly makes you happy, that if you never got a penny, that you would continue doing it. And then ask the universe to help bring you the abundance so you can ultimately change the world with those activities of regenerative, generous, loving, creative, productive, celestial, inventive,
catalyzing energy. It is that simple. Find that thing which inspires you more than anything else and begin to follow that as much as you can without blowing up the rest of your life unless you're ready for a true destruction of your past and moving into the new, which is a very painful way to move from one experience to another. You set the tone, you set the pace, and most importantly, you set the direction. Find your inner you, is what we say today, and make it a priority. And so it is. Namaste.